All right, and we are recording. Hey, Ryan, uh, thanks for taking a little bit of time to talk to my current students and and uh, maybe potential students in the future. Um, we kind of start off with an easy question, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to my class. Uh, yeah, so I'm Ryan Staples. I graduated, I believe, 2019 summer. And uh, yeah, I do mostly database work. Okay, so your uh, your job title is database... Administrator. Administrator. Have you been doing that since you got out of school? Yep. And who's your employer? Uh, that'll be Sunny Hill Incorporated. Sunny Hill Incorporated. Um, we don't get a lot of database administrators right out of Rankin. How'd you land that? Uh, pretty lucky, honestly. So, like, as you can tell by the name sounds, it's, um, it's kind of a... Like, they take care of disabled people and stuff, you know, so it's kind of in that line. And they are funded by the state, so they don't have a lot of money. It's a not-profit organization. And so they were kind of in a spot where uh, they had just had this new software they were trying to implement. And um, it was cheaper for them to hire someone new straight out of school than it was for them to, you know, go through a contractor and have them do all of it. So, uh, so it was just a pretty perfect opportunity for me. It was They gave me the opportunity to do this. And then for them, they, it was much cheaper for them to hire someone straight out of college. So Yeah, nice, nice. So did you have to look a long time after you graduated, or did you find it pretty quick? No, I actually had it lined up before I graduated, honestly. Nice. I had already interviewed and everything in, in May. That's awesome. So um, when you were interviewing... Um, did any of your like school work like help you like in, during the interview? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I said, um, it's mostly database. The majority of the work I do, the coding at least, is SQL and, and JavaScript. And uh, so all the stuff we did, you know, semester three, I think, with all the database MVC stuff was all very, like that was all really relevant. Nice. Nice. So you mentioned some languages, so I'm going to have you repeat those. What are the primarily... What are the primary languages that you use? So I use SQL to write stored procedures. So I do work on a software that like already is built, um, but it is a database thing. I do need to know how tables relate to each other and how everything connects, as well as I sometimes have to write my own custom stored procedures. Uh, but as far as reports and stuff go, that's actually in the software. I pretty much just tell the tables what to pull and how to link together and everything. Um, and then I write JavaScript for all my logic. Okay, so the two, if you had to say the two primary is SQL and, and JavaScript. Yep. Is it a, a Microsoft database or is it Oracle or what database system? So, I, like I said, it's through the software called Caseworthy. There's actually really not much information on it, which made it kind of hard to learn. But uh, it's kind of like this, uh, I don't want to say startup thing, but... It's, it doesn't have a ton of use. Okay. All right. So there's not a ton of resources. Okay. Cool. Um, and so you've been working for the same company since you graduated in 2019. Is that right? Yep. Nice. How big is your team? Uh, it is just me and my boss. And that's it. Wow. Well, so we do have a third person, but they uh, come in and out. I'm the only coder, though. I'm the only programmer there. Oh, so your boss isn't a developer. No. No, he's not. He has no idea how to do it. So that's unique because sometimes you graduate and you work on a team and you've got developers all around. What are the what are the things that you like about the position you're in? Kind of like a lone wolf. You gotta what are the pros and cons? Yeah, so the pros would be that uh that if I tell someone how long something's gonna take, they can't really argue because <laughs> they don't know it. Right. So that so that's like the convenient thing is like anything that takes a long time for me to figure out, they're like, Well, I mean, I can't say he's wrong. So that's the convenient thing. The bad side here is that I don't have any help with anything. And as I said, the web the software I use is not very popular, so it's extremely difficult even on like Stack Overflow to find any resources whatsoever. Because mm. because I have to use like their kind of third party software, and then I have to basically pick out data from it using JavaScript, and the way the JavaScript interacts with their software is kind of weird, you know, and the syntax is very strange for all of it. And so it can be kind of confusing, but I've pretty much gotten the hang of it now. But for the first about year, it was definitely pretty tough, not really having any resources or help. Pretty much had to figure everything out on my own. 
But other than that, I'd, I'd say I like it overall. Nice. That's cool. Um, what's uh, what's a day in in the life of Ryan Staples like as far as the the job is concerned? Uh, well, since COVID hit, I've been working from home. I actually moved to Kansas. I don't even live in the same state as my employer anymore. I didn't know that. Well, that's cool. How do you yeah. like Kansas? Uh, that's cool. My uh, my buddy's in med school, so he just kind of was like, hey, I have to move to Wichita. You want to come? And I was like, yeah, why not? And so I told him. <laughs> so, so I told my boss, and he was like, uh, he's like, all right, just make sure you're you know, checking in. And I was like, okay. And uh uh, you know, you, you hear about this, you know, is that, you know, the COVID now work from home uh, society. And so people are relocating and they're not even in the same states as their employers anymore. So people are mass exiting out of California and moving all across the United States. And, you know, you kind of hear these stories, but you're you're one that has lived it. Yeah. So before I even started working from home, my boss was like kind of talking about experimenting with it. And then COVID hit and he had no choice. And like, obviously working from home is pretty sweet. So I worked way harder, you know, for a while there when he, when I started working from home to show like, Hey, this can work, you know? And then he was like, wow, that does work. And it works for me too, because you know, like if I want to go out and get some food or something at one or two, like I can just do that and then just work a little later. Like it might, like I essentially have no schedule. I just get it done. Yeah, yeah, you're given a task list and you get it done. So so what's your normal time do you start every day, roughly? So I am always available from 8 to 4.30. I'm always available because people still need help with things. Like, oh, you know, this isn't working, my password, blah, 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 blah. I still have basic problems I have to deal with, so I do need to be available to, from that time frame. Yeah. Um, but then a lot of the major work I get done, I'll get done, like, really late at night. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So you're more of a night owl. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I bet. I bet. You know, uh, your boss is out there sleeping, and they say, "Wow, Ryan's working at eleven o'clock at night. I, uh, that's incredible." <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. That's cool. Um, so, so to, to kind of rehash a day in your life, you know, you're eight to four thirty. You're you're available. You're by the computer for the most part, solving problems. But you work some extra hours, you know, just to to work hard and and uh, do do a good job. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Nice. Um, you went through Rankin uh, and graduated in 2019, and you know you found success right out of Rankin. So you know you're you're a, a great example of a successful student uh, turned alumni, graduate, and, and employee. Um, what tips would you have to be successful uh, as a Rankin student? What, what, if you had to go back and it could do something different, would you do anything different? Kind of two questions there. Uh, I mean, not really. I was in kind of a weird spot. Like, I didn't start at Rankin until I was, I think, 26 or 25 when I started. So I was a little older. I already had a lot of work experience. And I, you know, worked my whole way through Rankin, which was kind of rough. Um, so my, my experience was a bit different than probably most people's. Yeah. Um, mostly I would say just, just do the homework, man. Like, like, I don't know, like really, it's, that's where you learn everything. Like, I don't know. Do the work. Yeah. Literally just do the homework. Cause all, I, cause all the people who weren't doing the homework were also failing the test like consistently. Kind of makes, makes sense. Yeah. Do the work. You learn. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, you pass. To have, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You just, I don't know. I don't know. My spot was weird. I didn't come here right out of high school like most people do. So. Well, and and most is not all. I mean, the, yeah. Uh, I'm sure you had other students in your class or in your age and around your age, and and certainly, you know, yeah, maybe a majority of our students are 18, 19, 20, but but it's it's not abnormal to be you know 25, 30, 35, 40, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just by the time I got there, I was already a little more mature. Like, I don't know if I could have done it at 18 or 19 because it is a really strict schedule. It's kind of tough. Um, and I was a pretty immature kid. <laughs> but by the time I got there, I was already, like, 25. And I was like, you know, if this doesn't work out, like, like I need this to work out. <laughs> you know, I was already getting older, and I was like, I need to do something. Yeah. So. Well, and I, I tell this to everybody, but our best students are typically that demographic, your demographic, those who had a little bit of life under their under their feet and they realize they don't want to continue down that path. 
that they're going to do something to change their path and therefore they take their education much more seriously than tip your typical 18 year old who doesn't know that as much and doesn't understand that because they haven't lived it yeah it just doesn't feel as urgent probably yeah for some of them some of them will do great too absolutely absolutely right but. absolutely right um you know you've been out in the industry for a few years now and so um what kind of uh expectations would you advise our students to have around, you know, kind of like starting salaries and where you would hope to be in a few years. Like, I'm not asking what you're making because, again, this, this is going to be on the internet, right? But you, you've seen the industry and what kind of salaries are out there. What kind of salary expectations should you have coming out of school? Uh, I mean, it really depends, to be honest. I, I mean, even just in our class, I saw ranges from, I think, like 42 to – I think the guys who went to Daughtry were making like 65 or 66. So there was just massive. It, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't really. Th I, I would say somewhere in the range of 40 to 70 starting probably. Good range. Depending. Good range. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a very large range, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think I think the 40 to 55 range is probably most realistic, but I absolutely did see a few people come out of our class making well over 60. So. Yeah. What uh, what other than salary is important to you uh, on a job? I mean, you've stayed with this company for for several years, so there must be, you know, I mean, I'm sure you're compensated well. But what else is important? Uh, working from home is sweet, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> wor working from home is 100% the coolest part. Like it's easily, like that is the thing. Also, I told them when I started. So when they when I started there, I told you they have the software caseworthy. They had just bought it. And I'm almost completely done rolling it out now. And it is completely browser-based, so I can show anyone at any time. So when I'm done here, it'll be really nice for me to be able to be like, look, dude, this is the software I built to take care of disabled people. And, like, I, I can show them the whole thing. Be like, I pretty much built this from scratch, you know. And I feel like even though, like, it's not maybe the most technical coding-wise, like, not, I think not a lot of people just fresh out of college can say they had that kind of responsibility to oversee a project that big. You know what I mean? And I'm, like, fully responsible for the training and everything. There's a lot that goes into it. Wow. So I think – and I'm almost done, too. I'll probably be done within the next year or so. What's the URL? Is it out there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a long one. It's uh, I'll just type it in chat, actually, so you can copy and paste it. That's the easiest way. Sure. I do this for the classes I teach all the time. So. What classes do you teach? Uh – I make the software, and then we have a ton of staff, and I've trained the staff on how to use it. Oh, I see. So this is this is the – would you say this is really the only software – like, you haven't worked on 10 projects. This is the one and only. Like, this is your baby. Oh, uh, yeah, this is what I'm building. That's cool. Um, there we go. So I, if you want, can share my screen because you're obviously not even gonna have a login. Yeah, go for it. Let's 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 uh, let's demo this real quick. Give us the uh, the bird's eye view. <laughs> so this is what the front looks like. Uh, basically, I have the three tabs here. So essentially what I do is we have, so as I said, we take care of disabled people. We mostly have Waiver and Isla. The Waiver are people who live in homes, and the Isla are people who are higher functioning and can come visit us. Um, and they generally have their own sides. We're not so looking at any sort of like uh, private data here that we're going to get in trouble. No, 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 okay. no. This is all. So this is the stuff on the back end. Uh, these are like the roles. I've got my waiver roles and my ISLA roles, and then they're denoted by how basically important they are, right, so that more people can do more things. So like if I go down to the waiver DSP, like a bunch of stuff goes away because they're not supposed to be able to do that much. And then if I go back to system admin, there's a lot more there. And uh, so basically these lead to forms, and then the forms – will lead to various other ways to store data. And I can also do like reports and stuff. Like these are all reports I've built. Um, 
I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, man, uh, in today's developer market, um, I'm sure this project alone is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. This is kind of what it looks like on the back end. So this is where, like, all the databases and the tables and stuff. This is only showing one here. But typically there will be, like, a ton of tables here, and they'll all be linked together and stuff. And then I'll have to – I'm not going to go too in-depth, but there's – I write – all my logic and stuff from there as well. That's where the majority of the work is done. Okay, so so at Rankin you learn full stack development and you're you're utilizing it. You see the front end, you see the back end, everything in between. Yeah, no, I pretty much do everything. Well, congratulations, man. I'm 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 super happy for you. You know, um, well, thank you. You know the the mission of Rankin is to prepare students for work, and you're a shining star example of. Uh, of a good demonstration of that. So congrats to you. I'm happy for you and enjoy Kansas. <laughs> How do you like it there? Uh, it's about as fun as it sounds. No, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay, I'll stay in St. Louis. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not too bad. I mean, it's I'm in Wichita, which is like a decent sized city. It's uh, yeah, it's cool. I just kind of wanted to move really. Like I always kind of wanted to get out of my hometown. Probably gonna move somewhere random at the end of this year too when my lease is up, I don't know. Okay. Don't live all over the place. L last question. Last question is, uh, you know, you came to Rankin, you studied development, and now you're working in this space. Is this a lifelong career for you, or do you see yourself after so many years changing it up? No, this is this is probably a lifelong thing. I mean, again, you know, I'm 29 now, pushing 30. Like, I don't – I'm a little late to the game to be changing careers up on the fly, you know. Not that I couldn't, but I'm definitely at a point in my life where, like, I know this isn't going to be my last job, and I know most retirements take 20 years, right? So let's suppose I get to the job I retire from next. I'm still going to be 50 by the time I get that. You know what I mean? So that's, like, I'm kind of at the age now where those are the things I'm starting to think about. Yep. And, uh, and just changing career on the fly is becoming less and less of an option by the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not a young pup anymore, neither am I. I understand. I understand. I mean, right now I'm only 29, but you know it takes 20 years to retire. So, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be one of those guys working the dock at 65 that I used to see before I started doing this. Like, I get it. I, I get have a question it. Before you go. Yeah, but yeah, I always open it up to some student questions. So yeah, okay. please. Uh, what did uh, he use to build out that application that he's um, that he just showed us? Like, what languages? Uh, it was well, so building. The background and the database, it, it basically it comes with a template for like, you have like a staff table and a, a person we support table and an entity table that covers everything. And I pretty much just customized all of that and then added my new tables as needed. And then I created all the forms and everything myself. Like basically it's kind of like a database template that you customize, I guess is what I would say. And then you add your own forms and stuff. And then what about the front end? The front end is just there. The front end, I don't really have to mess with that at all much. Oh, okay. Yeah, I pretty, I pretty much like it. I build the skeleton. I mean, I do like try to, like, I don't know. I try to like order it and stuff, but I'm not writing any HTML or CSS though. Any other questions from the class? Well, I gotta tell you, Ryan. I think these uh, interviews are very valuable. I think your interview was. Uh, was awesome. Thank you for taking the time cool. to uh, to uh, talk to my students. Yep, not a problem. All right, man. Take care, and and when you move uh, or when you stop through St. Louis, give me give me a call. Give me a buzz. All right, will do. All right, take care. All right, later. Bye.